Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Rookie Balboa run where I'm trying to beat the game on the hardest difficulty with only rookies. A couple of wet noodles and a lot of fun. Time to free Boris Bogdanov, our engineer in Operation Hammer Dance. Uh, when I read the name I was like uh, thinking about MC Hammer, stop Hammer time, and then he was doing the Hammer Dance. Maybe we can do that afterwards as well. Uh, we're up for 60, uh, 76 Intel, which could purchase us another scientist, so that's good. Got our modified uh, assault rifles here, which uh, will hopefully help us. All of them also deal plus one point of damage, and we got a single nice uh, flashbang grenade with us. So that's it for now. Let's jump directly into the mission. I should have potentially left Russ at home uh, because I want to make sure that he does not die. Eh, won't be that bad. It's an easy mission. Let's go, guys. Let's go. All right, so let's jump into the mission. We got one of those rescue missions right here with a single VIP, but don't get too overly excited. That VIP needs to be defended afterwards. Uh, so I'm wondering if we are going via this side, we are running right into the first pack. That was stun lancer plus stun lancer plus sectored, which is pretty much the maximum of what we can handle at this point. Let's just move up and see what they're up to. Commander, remember, no matter how so far it looks here, relatively innocent. The I mean, the one thing that we need to do, Russ is a better shot than A. Aaron. So A. Aaron will go down, Move Russ will go up here. And maybe we can trigger them into moving into us. Appears to be not the case. But if they are patrolling, they might be coming back at some point. So okay. let's just stalk them for a bit. What I'm hoping is since the pre-rescue phase is non-timed, in an optimal world we would be using our concealment, uh, that might work. If they are running into us, that might work. We, in an optimal scenario, we, we, we would be using our concealment to get four shots off. Alright, one stun monster down, and the other one maximum damage, fantastic. Because this here is much more effective than uh, engaging them with a grenade. Holy shit, what a good overwatch. What a massive overwatch that was. Maximum damage all around. And every single shot hit. Alright, Aaron moves up. But then misses. Forcing us into 50-50s. Good, so that's like 30% chance and too many hit points to just use a grenade. Okay, there is a second group somewhere, but for now, let's just slow this down massively. A lot of action just happened in one turn. Got another core, which is great. And 
can we work with the high ground here potentially All right, so far so good. It seems that uh, the enemies are pretty much standing here because we heard a voice uh, in a sound indicator from here and here, and no none of that really moved. Confirmed. Gives me a pretty clear sense of how to triangulate uh, them. Of course, we don't know what we're dealing with, which makes it a bit harder. Good. Full reload. Did you hear something? And did we just get another nice little overwatch on them? On the oh boy, two more stun lances. Oh. Hey, Aaron. Well, it's one thing after the other. Let's first of all breach from this side. Head to that location. Got a nice little shot in the back. Critical for A. That's a one shot. Lovely. Phenomenal. Oh, that was a good one. Headed there now. All right. I think a stun lancer is dangerous enough to allow us to use a bit more extreme measures. Such as removing all of the important cover and dealing some damage. There we go. Dranks our best bet in this case. Would be coming in. Full cover. And minimum damage. Mm. One time when you did not want minimum damage. Alright, I don't want to waste another grenade, unless I absolutely have to. I know that 84% is not 100%. That would bring us down to one grenade. Don't want to risk it. Might sound silly, but it's not 100%. Okay, so the whole shootout that's going to happen will require us to take really nice positions everywhere around here, including high ground, including a lot of high ground actually. And depending on where the enemies drop, um, I mean, we might need to kind of withdraw into a corner around here-ish. And then just let them come towards our position, right? So double full cover and high ground is definitely one of the best positions that we could hope for. Another two of us could um, position ourselves up here. This is not a bad position. Uh, there is enough cover in that direction if, if more enemies are coming. You never know. 
that's the problem too many angles these two here have excellent shooting angles uh, might as well put a third one up here you can jump down from here and get up here relatively soon but not the other way around Got so this is not a bad decision Good. we're reloading just so that everybody is at full ammunition before the fun begins I think that that's a decent position a good one so since I do have another appointment now I think I'll uh, do a small break, but for you it won't be much. Uh, the fight will start right afterwards. And welcome back. In real life, a few days have passed, but in XCOM it had only been seconds. So let's reassess. We were waiting to free uh, the uh, VIP. Got a potential good overwatch here and a good overwatch here, but... Uh, mm, I am wondering if we're covering the backhand side sufficiently enough. So maybe what we could do is Moving move to position. here and to That's here. That way we can reach all of uh, the important sites in just one move. Okay, enter. And now it's time to free the VIP really. Moving up. All right, jokes on me. And they are coming heavy from the right hand side. VIP identity confirmed. Firebrand is setting up for evac. We've got multiple contacts closing on your position. It's an ambush. Hold your ground. Well, it certainly is an ambush. Uh, the one thing that we could do is we could move over here. We could also begin to move over here. Uh, we could try to move over here and take the high ground on this end. That's not too bad. I mean, it's not optimal, but it still will give us high ground. We're moving up, having one overwatch shot. We're having a second one over here. Um, our VIP, where is the safest place for him? It might be funnily enough just here in the corner. Although up here would be even better. Enemies can't immediately take a shot, so might as well position the VIP here for now. It's fine. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with. That's a nasty pack right there. Ah, these sectors are pretty sturdy. We're not easily going to get them down, and specifically with those great Overwatch shots. Unfortunately, with rookies in Overwatch, even the high ground doesn't really compensate for it. Overwatch still has that 70% uh, uh, shot reduction, so whatever your hit chance is, really 70% of that is what the actual Overwatch value is. Okay, more reinforcements. Many, many more reinforcements. Good. Moving up here, a bit closer, and trying to get the trooper. Enemy eliminated. But we have a 70% chance to hit him. I think we're just going to do that reload. We got an uh, advanced hair trigger, so there is a small chance that we're seeing a hair trigger. Well, not today. Our VIP takes the described 
position right there. And that's a 50-50, uh, suboptimal. I don't like it, but we gotta deal with it for now. Getting into full cover over here. That's a 40%, I'd rather overwatch. 60% is good. Nah, not good enough. And an overwatch. Alright. Both of the sectors are well and alive. I mentioned they are quite sturdy. Luckily, our reinforcements are easier to be killed. Alright, that might be a kill. Come on. Mm. Too bad. We are lacking the firepower here. Mind spin. Don't jump down. Do not jump down. Yep, that's good. That's good. That's fantastic. Okay, we're seeing even more enemies. Much to my dislike. So, getting into full cover. Nice little flanking position here. Well, there's a chance that we would be able to kill him. Equally so. There's a chance that... Uh, definitely a chance that we would kill the others. 50% chance for crit, so let's try it. Could have used the flashbang grenade as well, but I wanted to make sure that we're... That we're saving that for even more dire circumstances. Conquering down. Fifty-fifty on that sector. Hmm. Sixty percent actually. Half cover is not optimal. I like the full cover that we're currently seeing. Maybe I'm just overwatching and whatever is going to drop, we can take a uh, take a shot there. I think that's the right play. 60% is okay. Uh, on the other hand, 0% crit chance. We have a decent chance of, of hitting, but a very low chance of actually killing. So rather overwatch and hope for a low hit point target to drop. They are going to move, and with the movement, they would die. Hmm. Of course not, if your 70% shot is missing. This is a reanimation, most likely. Okay. We're being somewhat overrun on this uh, side. Luckily, we have uh, full cover, which helps us. And even better for us, the enemies shoot just as bad as we uh, do. Dashbang grenade could be an option here. The problem that I'm seeing is still doesn't fully get rid of all of the enemies on the other hand side. Well, let's try to first of all deal with full cover. 50-50. Didn't work out. 80%. I think, to be honest, we're just cleaning this side here. Okay.
And let's get rid of the Advent Troopers. They are a bigger concern than the zombie at this time. Enemy eliminated. Continuing to reload. We have very solid positions here. Unfortunately, that doesn't help if you're continuing to miss 80 plus percent shots. Alright, the sector uh, with its uh, blaster is dangerous. <coughs> You've got to be really careful with them. Equally so, zombies are dangerous. Okay, where's the exit zone? Firebrand is in position for the extraction. Get out of there before things get any worse. Oh, nice. Okay, well, um, the one thing that is not so great with that uh, evacuation zone is. Not sure if our VIP can uh, can reach it. What kind of an ev evac zone is that, anyways? Okay, whatever. VIP begins to move up over here. Next turn we can run out. Menace one five, your extraction point has been compromised. Hold for new evac coordinates. Okay. Okay. Well, what we can do is we can simply start to run for our lives here and boogie out we got three enemies four enemies over here new enemies incoming uh, potentially not yet new enemies incoming but I think that that might be the best we can do at this point. Sprinting will make the overwatch shot very unreliable. Very good. We're outside of uh, the range of the zombie. And yeah, we could double move from here to the evac zone. Good, so he's going to overwatch. Charging further back. And what's the idea here? High ground would be fantastic, it's not gonna happen. So let's charge into full cover as well. Okay, the only thing that could distract us now would be a mind spin. But that is unlikely to happen. Yeah, we wouldn't have oh yeah, we definitely wouldn't have stood a chance if we continued to stay there. <clears throat> it's a matter of just running now. All right, into full cover. Nice little crit. Yeah, zombie double move. 
shouldn't deter us for now. Alright, come on. I want an overwatch. That doesn't happen. And they almost killed the VIP. Well, great. We picked up a lull in their forces. It looks like they're running out of reinforcements. Let's well, I'm not sure changes. if they are running out of reinforcements. Good, VIP is continuing to move out. That's one person out. No, can't fully get out here uh, out of here yet. Again, cannot fully get out of here. Okay, fair enough. So we gotta make a stand one more turn. could move completely out of line of sight but that would expose our VIP which in return we don't want to do right okay we could get out of here which means falling further back might be the answer This here will not help to kill the zombie, but it will help to deter the ones that are following us. On the other hand, we could take a shot, uh, so gotta be a bit mindful of that as well. can't get up there I'm searching for a good spot good we're mostly in full cover now half cover over here yeah that's not acceptable 25% is uh, no go. This, on the other hand, will at least deter them a bit. It's more about survival now than anything else. All right. Many more enemies. With a stronger team, I would have quite easily just fought through both sides and killed everyone. But unfortunately, with the rookies only, oh, it's just too many, too many operators to deal with. Are you kidding me? guy ran a half uh, ran half a mile what a sprinting zombie I think that was Russ if I'm not mistaken Moving on target location. which in return leaves me to believe that we've just lost the only bond that we had in the entire game. Not optimal. Remember my words at the beginning? Ah, it's not going to be that bad. Yep, it was Russ. Ah, it's very unfortunate. Killed by a zombie.
Yep. Rest in peace, Ross. It was great having you on board. So, let's take a good look. That was our only... Yeah, that unfortunately was our only bond. Huh. Commander, each of our soldiers has a unique relationship with their squad mates. As they complete combat missions together, their compatibility will grow. All right, so the good news is Sane here has very high compatibility with Diva and Sonar. We should, we should uh, put both of them together. And Roby and uh, Diva have good compatibility as well. So maybe we, we essentially try to bond them. At one time, I was employed as a biochemist in the pharmaceutical industry mainly researching vaccine production techniques just out of curiosity did we lose a weapon to work in one of the very first gene therapy clinics i saw firsthand what their technology is we got the old world rifle we got the hair trigger we got the laser side yeah we lost our <clears throat> we lost our weapon with a scope eh, not optimal losing a scope and a bond but yeah, that is what you get uh, from playing with Russ, although you should, uh, shouldn't have. Okay, we can continue making contact, that would be one thing. Rookies are another option. Oh no, we can't continue making contact, what am I even talking about? Oh no, wait, we got intel again. Uh, I remember we wanted to purchase a scientist. Let's do that before the month ends. I very much remember that. Yep, there we go. 110 intel, gone. Got a stock, that would be nice, but not needed. And now the month ends. Good, so we're looking at what? Uh, still lowering XCOM's income. Can't afford to let uh, the black market be closed. It sounds like we should expect these things to actively hunt us until we take them out. And are we doubling rewards for a bit? Am I going for the rookies? That would be six rookies. You know what? Let's do that for for one month. The benefits we gain from working with the resistance factions on their covert operations are a major boon to our efforts, but there are also risks involved. Good. So here we could get a faction hero, which we do not need, but we also would get a faction order, which would be good. By surprise, if we switch up our tactics, maybe we should try something new. The other option here is forming a soldier bond i think we're going for the faction hero mainly for the new xcom order so uh, let's put a rookie in there and who gets plus four i think giving a bit more willpower to Diva here would be a good idea. Let's try that. And keep it going. Fantastic. Good. So, Black Market has restocked and plated armor. Could be rushed for 155. Uh, That's a bit too much. Can't really, can't really allow that to happen. On the other side, we can put a lot of Advent Trooper corpses and a few Stun Lancer corpses up for sale. That's a nice little extra income. Now we don't need the supplies right now, so I'm not going to bother. I actually think we should go for the rookies before making contact because we need more rookies.
wouldn't have thought that I would have ever decided to do that. Very good. So we got the resistance ring now. Which, in return, we're putting an engineer right here. Because the covert actions will give us continuous bo bony, which I think we will need. We already have a covert operation underway, Commander. It will take some time to complete. All right, so far so good. Resistance ring works. Um, this here needs to be sped up so that we can build and uh, build the uh, extra energy that'll give us an upgraded laboratory, and then we can, in return, get a faster research going. We're at that point in the campaign where missions will become incredibly difficult. Approving grounds are ready, Commander. In terms of proving grounds, what can we do? Can't use a spark, I would definitely use uh, build one right now if I could. But that's a no-no in -no our rookie campaign. Uh, ammunition could help us. Special grenades, not so much. Heavy weapons, not so much. Skulljack in itself could help us. Just as an insta-kill uh, method, so let's start with that for now. And continue to scan for the rookies. Good, we got some more alien debris. Building the, alien, uh, the power relay right away and put our engineer on it, like I mentioned. With that, we can upgrade the laboratory soon, <clears throat> and then we can start excavating further. Our build order so far works out well. We just got to spike a bit more in in power. We need more power right now because it's a part of the campaign where we are falling behind the power curve quite a bit. So we got an engineer as an option here. Or, yeah, rookie. The market will not automatically close. We will get a second chance, and I don't want to play a protect the device mission. So, hack the workstation it is, and we're going for another engineer. We also got ourselves one, two, three, four rookies. Let's see, fresh meat for the meat grinder. <clears throat> what or whom did we get? So let me introduce, we got Barbie. And we got Universe. I remember uh, creating that character. We got Hayward, welcome to the team. And we got Axe here, Axe and Road from Sweden. Welcome to the team. Looks a little bit uh, like uh, the Master Sergeant from Halo. Let's hope he does equally well. Uh, what I would want to do in the next mission is get get a couple of bonds. So he seems to be the most likable guy ever. Diva. Diva likes a Aaron and Sane and Sane also likes Sonar. Okay, well then Sane Sonar it is and uh Divert and a Aaron. Is that uh, something we can do? So Divert is currently not there, but he and a Aaron could uh, team up <clears throat> and Sane can team up with Sonar. Yeah, that would work. Whom else can we theoretically use? Let's say if we use Shinrod here. Um, well, he apparently loves uh, inappropriate Murphy, which doesn't speak for his taste, but uh, he likes Hayward as well. So him and Hayward will be the other two that we're using. Good. That brings us to the end of this episode. It was long enough. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your uh, viewership. And if you 
like the meat grinder of uh, of this kind of rookie run leave a comment and uh, like down below that helps the channel and see you in the next episode bye bye